That's right, ladies and gents, today's video is sponsored by me, Mr. H. I am making my own HP Lovecraft horror film. Check out the GoFundMe link down below if you want to support independent and original film, and of course, HP Lovecraft and horror films. Uh, Breaking Lights is an exploration of depression, suicide, and mental health, and using that uh, and HP Lovecraft as an allegory to explore that narrative. So check it out, the link down below. With that being said, on with today's video. Hello, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. So, a few days ago, okay, two days ago, Bloomberg released this article, which detailed that Apple and Netflix were discussing with MGM the acquisition of the No Time to Die James Bond movie. Basically saying, hey, we want exclusivity. We will stream it. We'll release it for you. Because obviously it's been delayed, it's been delayed again, and now it's been delayed a further time. So this article was released a few days ago, and it's interesting because a lot of people, you know, we know that streaming seems to be the future. A lot of people are talking about streaming and a lot of things, you know, it, it's it's there, isn't it? It's kind of on the precipice. Are movies going to go to streaming or not? Now, one of the big uh, hurdles of that is, of course, the studio wants to get, at the very least, their money back. Uh, and we now seem to have revealed what those sums of money actually are because all of the talks have now stalled completely and the figures have actually been revealed to uh, to basically indicate what studios demand uh, for the rights to to a property that they've made um, which is staggeringly high so I thought we'd uh, take a look at this it is interesting so we'll have a look at this one first because this is the backstory this is where everything has stemmed from and then deadline release their article. Both articles are linked down below, so please do go and check it out. Now, Metro Goldwyn Mayer Inc. held discussions with Apple Incorporated and Netflix Inc. about taking its new James Bond film directly to streaming, according to people familiar with the situation. The studio says it's committed to a theatrical release, which does go on to what we we're going to discuss in a minute, which is the amount of money they wanted for a one-year license. It's insane. The film No Time to Die could fetch hundreds of millions of dollars in a potential streaming sale, said the people who asked not to be identified because the discussions were private. MGM declined to comment on any talks but said the film is not for sale. And oh no, it wasn't. A one year license was staggeringly high. The film's release has been postponed until April 2021 in order to preserve the theatrical experience for moviegoers. Netflix and Apple declined to comment. Amazon Studios, another shopper for big budget entertainment for its streaming service, said Friday that it's not currently in talks to acquire the Bond film. The MGM feature was originally scheduled to hit theatres in April 2020, uh, but it was delayed to November and then, of course, April 2021. Now, again, there's some other discussions here, right? This is important, right? So the horror film Antebellum launched on premium home video in September while Mulan debuted on Disney with a $30 charge. Apple also landed the movie Greyhound with Tom Hanks due to the pandemic and it debuted in July. Nabbing the rights to No Time to Die would have been a major coup uh, for a streaming service could have helped entice subscribers looking to watch the latest Bond movie. Now, the Daniel Craig Bond movie cost 250 million to produce and about equal that for marketing so they're about 500 million dollars all in they wanted to sell it to a streaming service for about 600 million for one year license unreal don't hold your breath waiting to see 007 film no time to die on streaming as cursory talks died quickly Oof. As a theatrical release of No Time to Die got pushed for the fourth time, while the makers of the James Bond film uh, give up on waiting for the pandemic to go away and instead premiere on a streaming service, or will they? Despite reports that originated from a Bloomberg scoop yesterday, sources say an emphatic no. Bloomberg wrote about a rumour that has been making the rounds the last week and a half that MGM offered the film to streamers Netflix and Amazon for a, for a proposed one-year licence of six hundred million dollars, so they would have still released it in theaters afterwards, because they've already made 
you know, made clear that they were committed to a theatrical release, they would have made their 500 million back, production budget, plus marketing budget, and then a little bit of profit, not much, but a little bit, and then they would have released it in theatres as well. Jeez, that's insane. Uh, exploratory dialogue between MGM and streamers did happen late September when MGM decided to move the Bond film out of its Thanksgiving slot. The studio and E.ON also considered doing a PVO deal like the one Disney did with Mulan, charging viewers directly. But Deadline hears none of the streamers was willing to put up more than half the amount asked for the one-year license, which they would never have done anyway. Like, MGM is not going to approve that. They're not going to go, oh yeah, okay, $300 million, that's fine, sure. They're going to go, well, no, because if everyone watches it and it gets pirated, no one's going to want to watch it in theatres, which makes sense. Like, I can see it from their point of view. Um, more importantly, Deadline hears that James Bond franchise principal producer Barbara Broccoli flatly uh, mixed the deal, but the whole thing was an exploration. A uh, nix the deal, sorry. Understandable, with everyone weary of waiting on a likely billion-dollar revenue event expected to happen a long time ago, which makes sense. We've heard right along that the studios of numerous finished films shelved by the pandemic have had cursory talks with streamers, but cursory conversations don't usually lead to articles. What streamer wouldn't kill to premiere a movie like Top Gun Maverick or the sequel to A Quiet Place? And what studio uh, that has seen theatrical revenues completely dry up wouldn't want to add cash to its bottom line? But most studios have decided it would be short-sighted to empty its slates of its best titles and been resolute in hanging on to most of its slam dunk hits. Makes perfect sense. It really, really does. Um, and this is the thing, right? So they're saying, if it's any good, No Time to Die has the opportunity to generate a billion dollar global gross in a healthy theatrical market. They're, I mean, they are, they're really banking on that billion dollars, aren't they? I don't know if the, I don't know if theatres can recover that quickly because I, don't, I know a lot of theatres are closing down. And if that happens, is there going to be enough venues to show it to reap that much profit across the worldwide market? It's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Now, we've got you know Paramount selling the Eddie Murphy coming to America sequel to Amazon, but many feel MGM and the Bond franchise would likely be better served hanging in. While MGM is working on a Creed sequel with Michael B. Jordan, is considering to direct and a new creative team is aggressively building a promising slate. Bond remains MGM's crown jewel. MGM, they're not like they're not making loads and loads of money. They're going to want to sit on this for a while. Uh, so there you go. I thought this was fascinating because it, it's an insight, isn't it? You know, yes, they do have talks, but this tells us a bit about exactly how much money they do actually go for. Now, this is only for a one-year license. They would have wanted to premiere it as well in theatres afterwards. Well, not really premiere then, but you know what I mean. They would have wanted to screen it in theatres. $600 million. That's basically covering everything that they've spent on it. That's what they want. That's what they wanted. Uh, and then, obviously, they've still got Blu-ray rights. Because this is just a license to stream. Absolutely madness. Just insane. So, what do you guys think about this? Please do let me know down below in the comments. If you're new here, please do consider hitting subscribe, give the video a like and a share. But thank you all so much for watching. Take care.